Arc has been blowing up the past 48 hours as another round of publisher Snail Games Corruption was broadcast for all to see across Twitch and YouTube. And this one doesn't look like it's going to be going away quietly. Now, as a former online competitive PvPer, things like this really get under my skin and should be exposed anytime they take place. What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and welcome back to the channel. Now this all started going down kind of late-ish for me on Monday. I couldn't produce and upload a video about it on Tuesday as I was already locked in and obligated to another upload. So here it is today, a day late. Sorry. Anyways, this is a really bad look for Snail Games, publisher of Ark Survival Evolved. And as I look back over it all, this is a bad look and a string of bad looks for Snail Games as they were once again caught with their hands in the proverbial cookie jar. Now, I'll touch on their latest infraction in just a moment, but let's take a look back at that string of screw-ups, because where there's smoke, there's fire. And in the case of Snail Games, there's a ton of both. There are two categories these infractions kind of fall into. You've got your pre-April 1st, 2023, and you've got post-April 1st. Now for everything pre, I would kindly direct you to check out HOD's channel, link in the video description, as he has done some interesting and in-depth research and called out Snail for their previous transgressions. Server admin abuse, a planned DDoS attack, DMs from Shihai himself, CEO of Snail Games. It's all over on his channel and we'll get you up to speed to the present. From April 1st on, I have been heavily researching the topic myself. Ever since we got that announcement that the UE5 ARC upgrade would now not be free and would be bundled in with ARC 2, later changed to ARC Survival Ascended, Snail and or Wildcard have been waging a two-pronged attack against anything deemed negative towards their planned activities. I think it's of extreme importance to briefly touch on these two items as they add context into this argument of systematic corruption being displayed by Snail Games. Now, I've touched on both of these items in the past, but they're still taking place and therefore need to be mentioned again. First is the inconsistent and sometimes barbaric way the official ARC Steam forums are policed, many times deleting contradictory posts to Snail and or ARC. Even moderately worded posts are deleted without warning, leading users to ask where their original posts have gone. More extreme is when users are banned without warning or explanation, even receiving site-wide bans for calling out technical issues or suspicious activity by suspected pro-snail advocates. By the way, this practice is also mirrored on the official ARC Discord server. The second offense is the suspected use of bot accounts to greatly enhance the overall Steam review scores. Now, as expected, ever since the April 1st announcement of the bundles and associated costs, aggravated players have been posting to Steam their displeasure, also mentioning the fact that Ark Survival Evolved is still on sale with no disclosures indicating the pending official server shutdowns and everything that's associated with the Survival Ascended conversion. Naturally, this affects the ratings, taking Survival Evolved from a recent review rating of mostly positive to mixed. Now, almost instantly, huge amounts of positive reviews from suspicious accounts started flooding into Steam, bumping the ARC ratings back up to mostly positive. If anything, Valve should conduct an immediate and thorough investigation of these reviews. It's just a basic look at some of these races' questions as to their validity. I've lost count of positive reviews posting incoherent or juvenile descriptions, many without a properly set up Steam profile where their account is entirely private and Ark Survival Evolved is the very first and only review the account has ever posted to Steam. There is no way that a game from 2015 that hasn't released DLC in years can accumulate this many legit positive reviews in such a short time frame. All right, like I said, that was important for context. So we've now established that Snail Games dabbles in the unprofessional and will definitely break the rules to promote their product, ARC. So what's the latest? Well, this one involves a gross misuse of server admin privileges to gain significant advantages on the ARC 
PvP Conquest servers. And when I say gross misuse, that is most definitely an understatement. Now this all starts up when the Island Boys tribe decides to attack a server and bases owned by the T tribe. Now if you've been around ARK for any length of time, T should ring a bell as they have been linked to snail games, as in snail employees playing ARK PvP are in this tribe. So this all begins with a smaller group of island boys joining into the official T server looking for legit PvP, and they begin with a small skirmish. Also, interesting side note here, but members of the island boys that were actually a part of the battle, including Exfibo, Shockist, Otters, Omni, and Hevs were all either recording or streaming the event live, so the video evidence of their tactical superiority is on full display and available for all to see. I highly recommend you take a look at all of these clips and videos for yourself, and to make it even easier for you, I will include links to all of their uploads and Twitch channels in the video description and pinned comments, so all you have to do is click and watch. Needless to say, T was clearly not skilled enough to handle the island boys, and each time T was close to losing the skirmish, they would drop the server, which is effectively ending the battle, and then roll back the server to a point where their dinos or team members were not yet dead. And this doesn't happen just once, where you could kind of chalk it up to bad server connections. No, 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 no. This happens 10 or 11 times in a row. The island boys attack and start mopping the floor with T, at which point T abuses their known connections to snail games and admin powers to nuke the servers and roll back to the point where they haven't lost any of their tames or their players. Now let me press pause on this specific drama for just a moment and throw in my two cents worth. Employees of an online competitive PvP title should never, let me say that again, should never be given backdoor access to servers or even worse, admin powers over those servers to a game they both work on and publish. This will always lead to abuse, bad men's gone wild, and it hurts the overall community trust and the publisher to provide a safe and fair online PvP arena. I'm still shocked that a known snail-backed megatribe is allowed to have and run their very own server, where the mechanics of the game can easily be manipulated, especially if you have admin privileges. And I'm speaking in terms of not only the connections, but for items like materials and blueprints and the such. Hey, those blueprints are extremely rare, not a problem for T. A few admin keystrokes and everybody in this tribe has everything. You know, that sort of thing. Now there's a ton more evidence here that the likes of Hod has covered in the past, but for now, let's get back to this Island Boys T showdown scenario. So at this point in the battle, the Island Boys have wrecked this small T base repeatedly, something like 10 or 11 times, and each time the server nukes and resets to an advantageous point for T. There's also been one or several Island Boys players during this initial skirmish that have been banned. It's a whole lot of ugly and it's about to get so much worse. And keep in mind, everything that I'm describing to you is legit and legal in ARK PvP. It's a tribe eat tribe mentality. This is PvP. You attack and conquer or you just get swallowed up to the victor, go the spoils, that sort of thing. Anyways, seeing what is happening here, the Island Boys decide just to fully mobilize their forces. They call up all the troops, which is basically the entire tribe, and they start transferring resources from their home server over to the T server. They set up a FOB, or a forward operating base. They've got their numbers stacked and ready. I mean, the shit's about to go down. And based on that earlier skirmish, the Island Boys are poised to absolutely demolish T, who seem to clearly be overmatched for both tactical and battlefield abilities. And so it begins. The Island Boys begin their all-out assault, and based on the clips I saw, this is a slaughter. They are methodically taking apart the T-Base and are within just moments of overrunning the entire thing and erasing T from existence when this happens. No! Are you kidding me? Bruh, look at this dude. 
<laughs> Wait till you see the. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm going to force me, Jack. I'm running force me. I got banned. I actually got timed out from him. I just got banned. I got banned. I got banned. So, in case you weren't paying attention to those clips, let me explain. The entire Island Boys tribe, that's roughly 80 to 90 players, all got a global ban at once. I mean, they were at the gates, ready to deal the final blow. T was clearly overmatched, and so they dipped into their bag of tricks, abused those admin powers, and banned everyone from the Island Boys all at once. I mean, what the actual f***? And this is exactly why, like I said, employees of a gaming or publishing company should never be given this amount of access to server infrastructure and or game mechanics. The entire Island Boys tribe was globally banned at once for conducting a totally legit raid on another tribe's base with their only offense being that they had attacked the T-Tribe. Now, ultimately, all but four of the Island Boys tribe was banned, mainly because those four had joined into the battle right at the end, and it has been speculated that the Island Boys roster, which T and Snail had to use to ban those players, was grabbed a little earlier on in the battle before those four players had joined in. And by the way, this is not the first time T has been at the heart of PvP and server abuse scandals, leading to T being switched from official servers over to classic conquest servers, no longer monitored by wildcard, but by snail themselves, effectively giving the inmates the keys to the jail. Now after their bans, many of the island boys took to the official Ark Survival Evolved Conquest Discord server, filing wrongful ban reports, all of which were instantly denied, as these reports are reviewed by, you guessed it, Snail Games. All around, another massive L for ARK. And it's bad enough what is planned for ASA and the cost involved to players, but to have the damn publisher outright abusing their server admin privileges and banning players for legit activities is beyond defense. Now, based on the videos and clips I am seeing, Snail Games should be severely punished and their rights and privileges to oversee ARK fully and completely revoked. No gaming community deserves this level of rule breaking and to come from the game's publisher makes it sting that much more. As always, I look forward to reading your feedback in the comments section below. If you happen to like the video, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. And while you're at it, ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alert. If you could rate and or share this video, it would also be greatly appreciated. You can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and over in my open community Discord server, links to all of which can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Shout out to the over 120,000 of you that have taken the leap and hit subscribe, and as always, a special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.